Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hello, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. And our devotion for this first day of July in the year 2020 of our Lord is the 94th Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, shine forth, rise up, O judge of the earth, repay to the proud what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? They pour out their arrogant words, all evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. And they say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of the people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear does not he hear? He who formed the eye does not he see? He who disciplines the nation does he not rebuke? He who teaches man's knowledge? The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out your law, to give him rest from the days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people, he will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against the evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who, whose fame and justice by statute? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold, and my God the rock of my refuge. He will bring back on them their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Lord, you are a merciful and jealous God. Convert your enemies and draw to you those who are going astray, but restrain the malicious persecutors of your church and the willful corruptors of your truth. Bring their counsels to naught and show that you are the Lord. Build your church and make it a city upon a hill for the salvation of many, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue tonight with our study of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So far the text. Since we have been justified through faith. Justified through faith. So, faith causes justification. Faith, the belief that Christ was crucified and rose again brings justification. It brings a right relationship with God. And it comes through Jesus Christ. Again, we've talked about this so many times. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. It is through Christ and Him alone that faith is produced. It is in Christ and Him alone that faith is produced. And justification occurs. As a young baby, children are baptized. They are baptized into the Christian faith. The Word of God is placed upon their forehead and upon their heart. The invocation of the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is spoken over them. And in that moment, we speak the words that cast out the evil spirit, and the Holy Spirit takes its place. The Word of God is connected to that child. It's God's doing, not our own. And children are a perfect example of how faith works. A baby cannot climb into the font and dip itself. Nor can an unbeliever believe unless the Word of God introduces faith. And that faith, then, has its way with us. 
Now, does that mean that someone can't reject the faith? Of course they can. God is not a bully. He will not keep people from doing that. But God remains faithful even if the believer becomes unfaithful. God has promised to be present. And God continues to send His Holy Spirit to work on that person even when they deny the truth. We need to, therefore, when we know someone like that, to pray for them and continue to share God's Word with them. His Word, not our words. And there's the problem. So often we try to use our words as if they are God's words. But it's through Christ and Him alone, through His Word and the Word alone, that faith comes. So, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. What Word of Christ might that be? Well, the Word that God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son so that none should perish, but that they might have eternal life. The fact is, some will perish, but God desires that not one be lost. And therefore sent His Son, that He might die a death that we dare not live a life we could not to give us what we deserve not, eternal life. And it's all in Christ Jesus our Lord, who gives you faith and grace that justifies in Him the relationship you now have with God and gives you that peace that surpasses all understanding, which only comes in Christ Jesus. And that's all for tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. And I know He does. God's blessings. Have a wonderful night in the Lord.